Welcome back here to Freight Waves Now, and we're going to take a trip across the Atlantic and visit with Patrick Berglund of Zanetta.com, who is at the end of his day, perhaps, uh, in uh, Oslo, Norway. Uh, Patrick, thanks so much for joining us uh, as we get a chance to talk about ocean carrier rates and uh, things that are, this is this is a world that is changing rapidly, uh, especially with alliances being broken up, and also you've got um, uh, you've got issues with Russia there as well. Uh, let's just start with a 50,000 foot view of the situation as, as you see. What are the major factors right now in ocean shipping? Guys, um, thanks for having me on. Um, I think if you really want to take a step back, we moved from um, a seller's market to a buyer's market. There's been scarcity uh, for, for boxes and, and, and capacity on the vessels for you know a couple of years going through the pandemic and then demand drops off uh, and uh, we find ourselves in a situation over the last six plus months where there's been a surplus of everything and uh, with congestions uh, easing and um, too little cargo fighting for uh, you know uh, too much capacity fighting for too little cargo it's very quickly become a buyer's market and and, and that's a problem for the carriers and now finally the sh shippers are seeing massive relief on their uh, budgets. And trying to understand, uh, you know, coming off of two years of unprecedented rates, uh, you know, making predictions often feels a little bit difficult. What are some of the near-term things in terms of outlook for these carriers? Is there a very real concern that uh, not only their contracted businesses are going to see uh, declining rates, but that uh, potentially some more may be inadvertently priced out of the market coming off of record years? Well, you know, there's... Um Going through the pandemic, a lot of the importers and exporters uh, really filled up their warehouses to try and deal with all these uh, supply chain disruptions. And what we're seeing now is uh, they they either really empt emptying out their stock, uh, and and uh, you know demand has fallen, but arguably not as much as what we're seeing volumes on the ocean fall. And and that's a problem. Uh, and the reason for that is 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 the situation with the warehouses and sort of emptying that out. Um, if you look forward, there is um, there is a need for from the carrier side to really uh, pull capacity out of the market, but they haven't been able to do it quickly enough to match the falling demand. And there is very little that indicates that this uh, equilibrium from the carrier side will be hit in the next three to six months. And that is almost a little bit of a mystery considering what they learned going through the pandemic, right? There's there's literally 10 carriers controlling more than 90% of global trade. You would imagine that they would strangle capacity in order to bump rates back up, at least to some degree from where we are now, because spot rates have fallen dramatically, but contract rates have followed much more quicker than we thought. If you take the traditional cycle on Far East into US, those contracts would typically be renewed, you know, in April and May when, when the traditional cycle runs in the US. But we can see from a peak of mid-2022 for new contracts coming in and renegotiated contracts coming in, we can already see a 70% drop off on those long term contracts. So already now, we can guarantee you that the earnings reported by the carriers in Q1 and Q2 is going to be substantially down. Yeah, that's that's going to be an amazing, amazing numbers to watch there for certain. One of the great X factors, perhaps maybe the greatest X factor uh, in all of this, is of course, is maybe geopolitical issues and how things are working in those regions. I mentioned Russia earlier in terms of what they're doing and how that that has uh, changed things in terms of going from Russia to uh, the European Union to America. You also have China coming back online, so to speak. They're, they're coming out of uh, you know COVID. People are going back to work, perhaps more manufacturing manufacturing is happening there. It's a tough question to answer, but how do you look at geopolitical events and how that is affecting uh, the ocean rates? Well, I think what we learn now, or at least I've seen over the last 15 years uh, within this space is that there's always something. There's always mm -hmm. something that's going to hit us. And, and whether that is a new US president that starts a trade war in China, whether that's Brexit, whether it's Taiwan, Ukraine, or lockdowns in China, the list is endless and goes on. And it can also be more obscure things like ever given blocking the Suez Canal, 
right? So when I try to look ahead, I can with most certainty say that something unprecedented is going to hit again, and that's going to swing the balance of supply and demand in this uh, industry. Um, and that with, with that, it's essentially impossible to predict. But what we see is that there's such a surplus of capacity that they will, it's very likely that they will not be able to, to turn it quickly around. So for three to six months, you have some visibility that uh, probability of, of rates skyrocketing again is, is limited. Now, um, there are certain things that is worth highlighting, that if you look at transatlantic, it's fundamentally different so far than what you have on, on the front hold trades of uh, Far East Asia in the US or uh, Far East into U Europe. That one is still holding up, arguably because it's two carriers controlling about 75% of the market, but also because US importers changed a lot of their sourcing pattern through the pandemic to, to source more goods from Europe, right? Now, this trade ensures some better profitability for the carriers than what we've seen in the past historical numbers on this trade. It's still significantly bloated, but we have seen softening of that market as well. So from that macro macroeconomic picture, you still have individual trades with differences, but it all points downwards. And I don't see any relief from, from the macroeconomic picture of what's going on uh, as per today. Yeah, that's, that's certainly, you, know, you can always kind of make it a, a decent guesstimation, but of course that is presupposed on the, the idea that you're not dealing with three, four, five geopolitical events at once or so. Thomas? Mm. And I, I had a question, it feels to me, uh, even from trucking, it's just, it reminds me of a prisoner's dilemma with these large carriers. In spite of them controlling in a majority of the market via alliances and agreements, is it a situation where one individual carrier could say, well, let me let me put out two or three ships, let me, let me scrap them, let me lay them up, but I'm worried the other carriers won't follow suit? Is this something where these, is any carrier able to pump the brakes, so to speak, or are they all kind of forced into this behavior where they're going to continue to undercut in spite of the so-called protections they had in place to prevent this from happening. Yeah, I, I guess you raise a valid point, right? But it, it also, some some good signs from this is that it seems to be a very open and, and competitive market still. And, you know, there's been investigations going on when the rates skyrocketed. And now maybe we're getting some answers that that, that wasn't necessarily the case, uh, as if it were, was arguably they would never allow this market to happen because they really, truly learn to print money going through this uh, pandemic. Uh, that being said, this is the first time in uh, probably a decade plus where they have the financial means to really park those vessels, even though it's an expensive move to make because you've already invested so heavily in putting this infrastructure into the market. They have the the, the spine, the backbone to, to make some drastic moves. And that could be one of the uh, surprises that we could see over the next few months that some of them more aggressively takes our capacity and, and then maybe others will follow. The worst thing for them is as, exactly as you point out, if that doesn't happen, you've made a very expensive and bad move. Yeah, uh, we've got about a minute and a half here left, Patrick. Uh, as you look at uh, forecasting over the course of, you know, for instance, as we see perhaps people prognosticating that the economy here in America may finally bottom out as far as, as, as uh, freight uh, rates are concerned and then start to go back up, uh, what are you seeing? What's the forecast right now for ocean rates as you see them and, and how optimistic are you about things hopefully coming back online in the not too distant future? I think I think what the, the the customer side, the BCO shipper side, should really care about these days is is the decision, the strategic decision of how long do you go in this market, right? Because carriers have sold box shipments at, at losses before. I've seen just from Shanghai to Santos, I've seen rates from fifty dollars to twenty thousand dollars over the last ten years, right? So if you think this is the bottom, that's wrong. It's, it still can get way worse. So from a shipper point of view, you should be you should be considering how do I position myself? Should I consider doing three month rates, six month, 12 month rates in this type of climate? Right? And what is enough for my business, whether you're a pharma company or a low margin commodity, these are very different considerations to make. And I think those are key over the next few months, especially for US companies, as they're heading into this main tender cycle.
Yeah, it's going to be very interesting over the course of the next six months, a year, two years of there. Patrick Berg, the CEO of Zanetta.com. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I guess determining on what time it is, enjoy your weekend. Likewise, guys. Thanks for having me on. All right. Thank you for joining us. Patrick Berglund here of Zanetta.com. Yeah, it's a, it's a, this is a very interesting time, uh, certainly in shipping on the on the oceans with, you know, like we said, alliances breaking up, geopolitical issues. This is, could be quite volatile. Reminds me of all the talk of collusion. In spite of the record profits, it was all accidental. We couldn't collude enough to maintain our <laughs> rates the best we can. So there's some good news, at least. There is. <laughs> in, in, in some form of looking High seas anyway. Game of Thrones. Sure. We'll take a short break. Be back after this with more Freight Waves now.